Hey guys, Dan Cavallari, Dawn Patrol MTB, here with a full review of Eleven's M110. Uh, I know, not exactly a name that rolls off the tongue, but you told us you wanted a review, so here we are. So what is the 11 M110? Well, we have a, a, a video to explain just that. You can click on that here, down below. We'll put it somewhere, Movie Magic. Uh, and basically, this is an entry-level mountain bike uh, that uh, Eleven is basically hitting a market that uh, is getting people into mountain biking, uh, and their whole notion is make a bike that's capable to grow with you. Now, we tested this pretty thoroughly to see if this bike can actually do that. In fact, we took it to Moab, and my gosh, there were a lot of polarizing opinions about this bike. But let's talk about how it performed. Now, in the Let Me See That video, we mentioned that it's got some pretty powerful brakes, which great, awesome spec. Uh, it's got an S-Ride, a drivetrain, which in the meantime, I found out is actually a, uh, a company that was founded by some uh, folks who came over from SRAM. So there is some technology in here that should make this fairly reliable. Uh, it's a fairly standard aluminum hardtail. It's got some, uh, some suspension up front with a lockout. Um, now, the question with this bike is, is it worth spending the money on this? And it's only $800 uh, to get into mountain biking with this bike or just go buy something used that was perhaps higher end in its day. And there were a lot of, a lot of takes <laughs> from our various testers. We'll get to that in a minute. But riding this bike, a couple things occurred to me pretty much right away. One is that it's certainly capable for dirt roads. It's capable for very, very light single track. Uh, and it's, it's inexpensive. And I think with the, with the spec, you know, with these, these solid, uh, brakes, pretty good entry level bike, especially for 800 bucks. And actually you can find it on sale occasionally for even less than that. The drawback to this bike that all of our testers agree on was the fork. Uh, the suspension fork just did not feel supportive enough to the point where it almost felt like a liability, uh, especially if you're a rider who doesn't uh, really mountain bike all that much and you're just getting used to the notion of suspension in general. Not a lot of uh, support here, but you can lock it out. So there is that. So if you're going to do some longer fire road climbs, most people are probably going to ride this on pretty tame stuff. It's going to be okay. Now, we put this in the hands of one of our most experienced riders, uh, Russell Ike, and he took it to Moab and actually rode it on some of the trails in Moab to see if it's capable to handle some actual, real, rugged uh, single track. Now, Russell was not thrilled with the idea of riding this bike at first. He had a, a different take after riding it. Let's check out what Russell had to say. Hey, I'm Russell Like with Dawn Patrol MTB, and with me is a bike that reminds me a lot of starting mountain biking. Granted, I started 25 years ago. Uh, the specs on this thing are pretty interesting. The name, M110, refers to a 10-speed drivetrain. Uh, it's an interesting company. I never heard of it. It's called S-Ride or S-Ride. Um, it worked okay. Um, the other things, it's an aluminum frame, 29-inch wheels, a one-ring drivetrain with a narrow wide chain ring, so the chain does stay on. Um, and then the most polarizing part is that fork. It is an unbranded fork and it does have a lockout, but the fork itself really lacks in damping. So the control of it and also the support. Uh, it does have a preload knob on the left side, but doesn't seem to make much difference. And it doesn't actually go to a stop either way. One nice surprise is that it has fully hydraulic disc brakes. Um, they are unbranded. There's no name on them, but they, they felt good. They didn't rub. Um, for what it is, they're more than adequate. So I'm very spoiled when it comes to bikes. Lots of carbon, lots of expensive squishy bits, lots of really good drivetrains, disc brakes. So getting on this thing, I didn't have that high of expectations. However, when I got out on trail, it was kind of a rush of nostalgia. Like it's a very much, it's a very steep, aggressive geometry. It means your weight is over the front much more than today's bikes. Um, I remember riding bikes like this. I rode them for years. The big thing that really helps the 11 is the 29 inch tires. They do actually roll over everything much better than a 26 or even a 27.5.
And that really helped given the poor nature of the fork and just the stiffness of the aluminum frame. What could make this a better mountain bike is bigger tires, more, especially in the front, just something with more air volume to take up those hits. And of course the fork. If they could partner with a fork manufacturer and offer a fork that has decent support, that would improve the ride greatly. While I did have more fun than I thought I would on this bike, um, I feel like this thing is best served for commuters, especially with that lockout on the fork. Um, maybe commuters who want to try out mountain biking and just you know, hit the trails here and there and see how they like it. Another consideration if you're thinking about this bike is that it's gonna be a little tough to upgrade, mainly because it has quick release front and rear wheels. So if you did wanna upgrade that fork, you would also have to upgrade at least the hub, most likely the entire wheel. While I did ride this on real trail in Moab, Utah, I also have been riding for 25 years and I rode it hard, but I also rode it smooth. I was very conscious to unweight over rocks, roots, chunky stuff. Um, I think a beginner rider with less skill level, less, less knowledge of how to ride a bike might get in a little bit of trouble, especially with the wheels and tires um, and the unforgiving nature of the fork. So there you have it. So that's Russell's take. Now, Russell is, of course, an advanced rider who knows uh, the difference between good equipment and not so great equipment. So probably not fair to put this bike in his hands. But the, the fact of the matter is there's really two ways you can go about getting a bike for less than $1,000 these days. One is to find a good uh, used one that has some older technology, but of course you could be buying somebody's problems. The other way is to find an inexpensive bike like this. Now, I think the 11 uh, M1x10 offers everything you're gonna need to be uh, an entry level rider getting into mountain biking. You're gonna be on tame roads, you're gonna be on tame gravel, and you're gonna be on very, very light single track. This can handle all that. Uh, but once you get to the more rugged stuff, you're gonna to wanna to upgrade, and I think that's that's the catch-22 of any bike like this. At some point, you're gonna to wanna to upgrade. Can this grow with you? to an extent. But after a certain point, you're gonna to wanna to get into something that's a little bit built more for rugged trails. Uh, there was no real problems with the shifting. There were, the brakes are great. Uh, I would probably upgrade the tires to a little bit, something more, a little aggressive. But otherwise, this is a certainly a capable bike. If you just wanna throw your leg over a bike and go, hard to beat this for 800 bucks. What do you think? Uh, go give us a comment below. Of course, hit the thumbs up. Uh, we want to hear from you. What do you think? Should you, as a new rider, uh, invest in something like this at around the $800 price point, or should you go with something used that had older technology that was tried and true back in the day? You tell us what you would do if you were a brand new rider. Follow us on Instagram at Dawn Patrol MTB. You can, of course, find us at DawnPatrolMTB.com. I am Dan Cavallari. Thank you for listening. We'll catch you in the next one.